right, we'll start things off to the right with Gerald. Damien, good to see you. Gerald Borgay, PHNX Sports. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess the big question, since we didn't get to see you at Media Day last year, how are you feeling physically, and how close are we to seeing you on the court again? Uh, physically, I'm feeling good. And uh, you know, the plan, everything can continue to progress, and I'll be out there. Damien, just to follow that up, um, when you look at what the, the journey has been, just to get back to the point where you're in this position, how does that feel, you know, emotionally, physically, because we speak, caught up with you on the videos and seeing the progression, but how has it all been uh, mentally and emotionally to get back here? Uh, I mean, to be completely honest, it's it's been a journey. Um, October 10th will be a year out of surgery. And, um, you know, like I explained before, I don't know if everyone saw it, but, you know, I, I, I had a, went, I initially went in for a regular meniscus injury, come to find out it was a root tear. Um, then come to find out both roots were off, so it was a double posterior root repair, um, which is very rare surgery. Um, had some other stuff go on in the early part. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it was, it was a, it was uphill battle for a while. Um, fighting depression, going to see a therapist. Um, just didn't know if I was going to be like the same person again, let alone the same player. So, you know, going through that was tough, but I mean, I, I got to give credit to God, my family, my wife, my kids, my mom, my support system. Um, I've been documenting this whole thing. And it's pretty crazy to see, like, the jump that you could have. Because from a month in, there's no way in my mind I would think I would be where I am now. Three months ago, there's no way I would think that I would be where I am now. And it's not that, like, I haven't been through stuff. Like, I mean, I've been through some shit. Like, I've torn both my ACLs before. I've had foot procedure. I've broke my hand twice. Like, all before playing in the NBA. Like, I've been through it. And I'm still standing tall. And that's perseverance. That's resilience. That's faith. That's, like, believing that it's possible. All adding into the fact of being undrafted, which guys like me don't, don't, we don't get chances like that. You have to go get it. You gotta go take it. And that's really where like my mindset is, like this year it's, I understand this is a very, very meaningful year for my career. And for me, it's just a matter of coming in every day, daily deposit crew, getting my work in, doing what I do, Staying down and whenever my number is called, just being ready to go out there and play. You'll be able to, to be ready to go tomorrow practice well. Yes, sir. Okay. Damien Callen Olsen, Arizona Sports. Great to see you. With what you were saying about your mental health, can you tell us a little bit just about the, the growth that you've seen there? And do you just feel like a mentally stronger person after going through this process and also like self analyzing and seeing like therapy as an option for you? Yeah, I think. I think there's times where like we as males, especially black males in this society feel like therapy like isn't, isn't, isn't a way. We go to the barbershop, that's therapy. We listen to music, that's therapy. We play sports, that's therapy. But like there's ways of, of getting out of your own mind and getting out of your own head that are, 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 are needed and, and should be encouraged. And talking about myself, for, like I've, the first time I ever had a surgery, I went to therapy, cool. And then, you know, I come back and I'm playing, but now it's, it's, it's bigger than me. I got a wife, I got two kids. Like I can't afford to not be in the right spaces, like not be good.
because there's other people that are counting on me. Um, and knowing what this game has done for me al allowed me to be, you know, have success in this game. It's like I, 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 I can't quit. And I had so many thoughts about it. Rehab wasn't going well. Is this it? Is like, but I can't. Like, I've never been a quitter. One of my favorite quotes, my college coach, Bruiser Flint, would say every year, it was on the wall, I got it tatted on my arm. It says, the pressure is not to perform, the pressure is to prepare. And that thing's like stuck with me. It's like, no matter what happens out there, the lights shine bright, all this shit, it's great, it's cool. But like, it's what's done in the dark. If, if you make sure everything that you do, when the lights aren't showing, your family life, everything's good at home, everything's good, then like, when that moment comes and you get the interview and you get, you get all the praise and the glory, it wasn't that shot that made it, it was everything that was done beforehand, that, that preparation that allowed you to get there. So I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but th that's, that's, that's where my mind is. And you know, I feel like therapy has helped me with that. Clarity has helped me with that and just understanding like what matters that Yes, I play basketball, and I'd love to play professionally for the next five, six years. Love to run around with my kids after that. But like, basically, if I did not have the surgery last year, I would have had to had a knee replacement in the next three to four years. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was sometime between that three to six month mark, um, once I was moving a little bit on the court and then between that six to nine month mark and in, in like the last like two, three months was really where I felt like I started to turn the corner. I mean, like I, I talk about the depression piece, like I, I was, I was up to 225. Like if you guys look back at pictures of me in like in February, April, whatever, sure, I, I wasn't able to be as active. Okay, cool, like that makes sense. So that that plays a part, but I was up to 225. My playing weight is like 202. So like that, uh, once again, that's another thing that is like a layer where people look at us, you know, social media, whatever, fans, and they look at us and think that we're superheroes, but like, we're real people going through real life shit. And I'll never, I'll never take anyone's story, what everyone goes through for granted because I have my own mountains and my valley could be someone else's mountain. And it's just like taking yourself out of it and just thinking of perspective. So that's like the biggest thing that I've taken out of this whole thing. Hey, Damian, Mason Wood with Back Sports Page. Over the off season, you got to go up to Louisville and do a camp up there with a bunch of kids. What was that like for you? And was there any takeaways from that that you're able to use in your career and in, in your future, like as a father and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's part of my Damian Lee Family Foundation. Uh, me and my mom have been doing that since 2017, so seven summers now. Um, and like we, every time I go back to Louisville, I normally have my golf event planned around that same time and then I'll just do a free camp for kids and for me it's like I want those kids to see that it's attainable to see that I'm I'm a real person um I may not be the overall best player in the league but I'm one of the 450 I'm, I'm one of the 500 I'm one of 5,000 people to ever put on a jersey one of x amount of people to ever be a part of a championship team so like I want these kids to see that it's tangible and my main thing that I preach to them is, is not, you can be me, you can be in the NBA, sure, anyone can say that, but what are you gonna do for the next generation? The main goal is to go to college. You go to college, you get free scholarship, you come out with no debt. Then after that, you travel the world, whether it is the NBA, whether it's overseas, and then you're the light, you're the vessel, you're the source that can go back to your community and then you can be the hope for the next generation. That's what I feel like life is about. That's what legacy is. Legacy is how do you affect the next generation in a positive way so that they can then affect the next generation. I feel like in this day and age society, there's, there's too much BS that's lost. 
There's too much stuff where it's me, me, me. Ever since COVID, people just care about me. Why not care about the next man, care about the next woman? Care about mothers or people that can't have kids, people that want to do IVF, people like, why not care about them? Why not care about the positivity that we can bring amongst, you know, the generations that are coming behind us? Because that shit matters. We were all raised, we all had people to thank, to look up to, that were positive impacts on us. So why not do that for the next generation? I'm not saying it's the easiest thing, but it's just, it's, it's a small gesture that we all could do, especially people of prominence, people of light, people of positivity, people in this stature. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's low hanging fruit. We'll go final two. Um, hi, Damien, Shayla Krim, Threefold News. Um, we're so glad that you're back. We're so excited to see you play this year. One thing that I've noticed with you is you've just always been supportive of Mercury and coming and doing photography and showing up for your team. and. It's been a really big impact on the fans just to have your presence around. How has your photography helped you um, through this time? Because it's been so impactful for people to just see you being here, even without us knowing what you're going through. Yeah. Um, I, I actually, I was having a conversation earlier about it. It's like the beauty of photography in, in my eyes is that you can make memories in a moment and you can like freeze time as it is, um, and, you're, and you're able to tell a story in that. And, you know, they say pictures, you know, can say a thousand words, but you're able to tell a story in real time. And I think for me, my biggest thing is, I know when I'm in between those lines, like I don't have the biggest ego, but like I feel like I belong. Um, when I have this jersey on, I feel like I belong. In my mind, I know I belong. Um, but when I don't have the jersey on, I'm just as normal as everyone else. I have my hobbies. I like listening to Casey Musgraves, to Adele, to Kendrick, to J. Cole. Like, I love music, I love art, I love sports, but like when I'm not in this jersey, I try to live life as, you know, some would say a regular person because I know that this is a moment and I'd love for this moment to last as long as it can, but eventually the ball's gonna stop bouncing, so. I have to enjoy it in the times that I can, but when I'm not on the court, I'm 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 chilling. I'm hanging. Like I'm and like sometimes it still weirds me out. I'll tell y'all this, we were in Paris at the Olympics and we were there for probably like five days. There were at least not even lying. Me, my wife, um, Callie and Seth basically like were roll dogs. We went everywhere together. There were at least like 10 people every day in Paris, my first time in Europe, coming up and telling me like, hey man, we miss you, hope you get healthy, good luck this year. Man, I remember your game winning shot versus the Mavericks. I remember your game winning shot when you were in Golden State. And for me, I'm like, we're literally uh, halfway across the world and these random people are coming up to me. Like that sparked another thing of like understanding what my impact is. Cause sure in the states, you know, it's a what, it's what have you done for me lately? You make you make a shot, you go four for nine, you're the greatest shooter ever. You go two for ten, you suck. We want to trade you, the fans, the people on social media want to trade you. But like, where's where's the human interaction? Where's like the understanding of what it took to get to where you are? I heard a there's a lyric. Uh, Big Sean said it. It was like people talk down on us that never got up here. And it's like that's, that's where American society is. And it's just the reality. Doug Franz, Doug Franz Unplugged, thanks for opening up. You said uh, a little bit ago when you were talking about family, you said now people are counting on me. And you mentioned your wife and your kids. Is that extra motivation or does it scare the hell out of you that other people are counting on you like that? I think it's motivation because I see myself in them and I would be a fool if I quit on them because I see myself in them. I see I, I, the stuff that my wife goes through. I can, you know, associate with that. I, I literally see myself in my children, 
in their features, in how they act. So it's like, for sure it's motivation. I mean, I, I already have enough internal motivation that when it comes to the external motivation, it's, it's, there's very few things that get me going and family is one. And it's just knowing that, like, no matter what. I mean, even, even this entire journey back, we've been documenting it. And originally, it was going to be a documentary going into the season last year, but now it's a comeback documentary. My kids are two and one. We're going to break it up, put it in however many part series, and they'll be able to see the growth, not even of just them in the videos, but see the growth of me, the things that I've had to go through, so that they know that anything's possible. Like I've, I mean, I told you, I have been through a lot to be here today, and I would be damned if I give up. That's, that's, that's not even an option, you know what I mean? So for sure, it's motivation. Some things are scary, but that, that's not one of them. All right. Thanks, Eli. Appreciate it.